an important subject, and uh, our time is going to go quickly. Uh, questions are coming in, and we do want you to go to Crossroads 360 for a fuller uh, expression of um, understanding answers to these questions. But let's start. The number one question today, Jerry, can Christians be demonized? Now, we're going to deal with that in extensively at 360, but let me ask it this way. How do demons work in the lives of non-Christians and Christians? Very important question. To believers, Paul said in Ephesians 4.27, do not give place to the devil. Jesus said to Peter, who was trying to have man's idea, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, Paul said to the Thessalonians, we would have come once and again, but Satan hindered us. In 1 Corinthians 5, the incestuous man was delivered to Satan. They said, turn him over. Paul said, turn him over to Paradidomai. Satan. Paradidomai. It's take your hands off. God abandons someone to their sin. So demons work in a believer's life when they are in spiritual disobedience, when there is known sin that they are not repenting of, confessing, and turning from. And so don't give place. It is a drawer. Like... Christy keeps all my socks in one drawer and my t-shirts in another drawer. Paul's saying, don't open up a drawer of your life and give room to the enemy. And so we have to walk in obedience as believers. And we can, if we're not careful, allow sin, allow the lust of the flesh to come into our life. The unbeliever, Ephesians 2.2, 2, Paul says is according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works, in the hearts of the children of disobedience. And this is where I love C.S. Lewis. To North American intelligent people, he doesn't want to reveal his identity, so he'll create any idea, any ism, any cult, any psychology, any psychiatry that denies the supernatural. It was Scott Peck in People of the Lie yeah. who said, we cannot have a psychology that denies evil and the source of evil. Very true, he did that after studying the massacre of the Ma in Vietnam. You're talking about willfully opening yourself up to demonic influence. And, and we don't say demon possession because that implies ownership. A child of the king can't be owned by the no. devil, but demonization, uh, or as Dr. Grant Mullen says, demon attachment. You got to cling on there. Yeah, and here's the thing too. If you're walking in holiness, if you're walking in obedience, the devil can't touch you apart from God's permission. Now, Jerry, what about woundedness? What about that unconscious vulnerability to demon influence in your life? Well, it's you know, very... Uh, uh, shame, rejection, uh, anger. Some of those things can provide a playground. I don't think anybody commits murder or suicide without having demonic involvement. Yes, there is mental illness, but the, he, Satan is the father of every lie and he's a murderer. Mm -hmm. And we live in a world where there are, it's, this is very real, but again, I want to just emphasize, and the book does this in detail. That's why we, we can't possibly cover an entire book, even in our interviews. So we want our friends to call and get it. But there is power through Jesus Christ. Remember what Paul said? He said, we are a superman. That's literally what it is in the original. We Where's are more than conquerors. Okay. <laughs> through him that loved us. So the Holy Spirit comes in the believer and we have total peace and confidence. I want to quote your book. Um, you quote a, a name I know from Bible school, Merrill Unger. He's been gone for a while, but he was a, a real expert in this arena. He says, as spiritual beings, demons are intelligent, vicious, unclean, with power to afflict men with physical hurt and moral and spiritual contamination. Well, Charles Swindoll was a student of Merle Unger. Really? What's fascinating about Unger at Dallas Seminary is the, the last part of his entire career, and he was a theologian's theologian, was spent studying demonology. Mm -hmm. We quote him extensively in Christians and Demons, he had some very, very interesting findings like Dr. Koch and others. And uh, his comments are truly worth consideration. 
We need to know our enemy, and uh, that's why we're doing this this week and next. And again, uh, yeah, I got your questions, and we're going to try and cover all of them. Crossroads 360, would you join us in the ongoing conversation there after the program? And get the book, because this is such a thorough teaching. Uh, so many Christians who love God's Word are confessing, I don't understand this. I've never heard this from the pulpit. You're going to hear it now. 